Old Europe and New Europe. You mean nothing. You stand for nothing. You are nothing. You're an American colony. Take down all your flags, put up the American flags, and acknowledge your colonial status. You're an exotic tourist destination. That's all you're good for. During the 1980s, the U.S. project for a stellar shield was aimed at destabilizing a situation that was already very dangerous. Fortunately, an agreement was reached. Gorbachev and Reagan signed an historic agreement, the INF Treaty, Intermediate Range Nuclear Missile Treaty, which led to an important reduction in nuclear arsenals and marked the beginning of the end of the Cold War. During the 1990s, the United States resumed the same project again despite criticism throughout the world. On the 3rd of December 1999, Jacques Chirac, then President of France, declared we must avoid any questioning of the ABM treaty that could lead to disruption of strategic equilibria and a new nuclear arms race. After the failure of two tests, and above all after seeing large-scale resistance, even from the closest European allies, Clinton gave up this project in 2000. Vice President Al Gore commented, As President, I would oppose the kinds of missile defense systems that would unnecessarily upset strategic stability and threaten to open the gates for a renewed arms race with Russia and a new arms race with China. But then things changed quickly. In 2002, President Bush withdrew unilaterally from the ABM Treaty, which would have assured a certain international stability for decades. In great secrecy, negotiations with Poland and the Czech Republic began in order to create the so-called Stella Shield. It was clear to the European Parliament that the United States wanted to divide and weaken Europe by using those politically weakest states naturally hostile to Russia. America will always be able to control Europe by dividing and conquering. Russia, China and other European countries criticized President Bush's policies. And in 2005, Canada officially refused to contribute to the U.S. plan. The Czech government declared that the project was within NATO, even though many NATO member states even today are against it. The missile defense system planned by the United States and which is to be installed in Eastern Europe is politically extremely dangerous, declared Gerhard Schroeder, the ex-German chancellor. The Czech government began official talks with the United States well knowing that the majority of the population was contrary and over 70% would like the decision to be made by means of a referendum. On the 20th of October, an international meeting took place at Brezhnev, with 80 mayors from the Czech Republic present. A message of solidarity was sent by London's mayor, Ken Livingstone, and the mayor of Hiroshima, Tadatoshi Akiba, sent a video message. Fifty European and American organizations were present, and also the representatives of 13 European humanist parties. All agreed on the fact that the installations in the Czech Republic and Poland will increase already strong international tensions and will lead to a new and uncontrolled nuclear arms race. Here in Hiroshima we are frightened by what appears to be a completely unnecessary attempt to rekindle the Cold War and we are more than grateful to you for resisting. It has been claimed for years that the Stellar Shield was basically designed as a protection from missiles that could be launched from Iran. Scott Ritter, the ex-Chief Weapons Inspector of the United Nations and ex-US Marines officer said, We have seen that in Iraq there are no weapons of mass destruction. But immediately afterwards, the United States began the war against Iraq. And I would also point out that here we are, almost three weeks into this war, and um, where are the weapons of mass destruction? He added that the situation in Iran could follow the same path, and the United States could set off another war, even if there is no proof of any nuclear threat from Iran. But this is about the imposition of American imperial hegemony over the globe. This is about the putting into practice the Bush doctrine of American unilateralism. According to a study by 16 American intelligence agencies, Iran had already ceased to work on the production of nuclear arms in 2003. According to a widely held theory, the real intention of the United States is to militarize and conquer space, and in this way to obtain complete control over this planet. This was the fundamental reason why, in 2005, Canada refused to collaborate with the USA, 
after understanding that this did not involve a system of defence, but a system of attack. Another point of view shared by many is that any defence system is easily penetrable, and even if it were really effective, enemy powers could build missiles capable of puncturing it in a few years. In this way, further improvements in this defence system would be necessary, leading to an endless spiral in which the only ones to gain would be the companies producing armaments. As Massimo Zucchetti, a nuclear physicist at the Polytechnic of Turin, has said, Non c'è mai un'arma ultima. L'arma ultima diventa dopo un po' sempre la penultima. Beh, in qualche modo gli, i militari e i ricercatori scienziati addetti a questo campo devono trovare il modo per spendere le enormi risorse che sono a loro dedicate. Meanwhile, some other European countries are directly involved in the American projects. For example, Poland, where the interceptor missiles would have to be based, and the United Kingdom, where the government is in full agreement with this defence system, even if the population is against it. While officially declaring that NATO and the European Union should speak out about such an important project, in February 2007, Italy signed a secret agreement with the US. Within the program of the so-called Star Shield, new military bases will be built in Italy, and the existing ones will be enlarged. The whole of Europe is involved in it too, and various governments have left the people in the dark about the important decisions made above their heads. On the other hand, Russia, after the negative response of the US to its request to suspend this plan, has started to produce new nuclear weapons capable of puncturing the American space shield. In the Europe for Peace campaign declaration, Giorgio Schultz says, Europe must not support any policy that drags the planet towards catastrophe. Chomsky and Gorbachev wrote in 2007 when joining this campaign, It is important to remain vigilant and actively resist any plans to make Europe once again hostage to the fear and prejudice characteristic of the Cold War. Europe is uniquely well placed to undertake the historic mission of saving the human race from self-destruction. The Argentinian thinker Mario Rodriguez Cobos known as Sila, inspiration for active non-violence, says, Whether everything ends up in chaos and civilization starts anew, or we begin a stage of progressive humanization, does not depend on inexorable mechanical designs, but on the intentions of individuals and peoples, on their commitment to changing the world. In December 2007, the humanist movement, which was already with other organizations, given birth to a protest movement against the American bases in the Czech Republic, declared that Czech citizens have tried everything, a petition with more than 200,000 signatures, discussions, conferences with the participation of well-known figures from the scientific and artistic worlds, demonstrations and dialogue with politicians. Yet the government is completely ignoring the opinion of the majority of citizens. Therefore, we have decided to use a new form of struggle, the boycott. We are proposing to put pressure on the United States government by means of American corporations. Don't buy American goods. Nonviolent protest has had positive victories over its long history. The best known are the movements of Gandhi and Martin Luther King. These movements showed that nonviolent struggle is an actual possibility to change the violent plans of our enemies. Nonviolence brought India independence from the cruel British colonial regime and brought civil rights to black Americans. Now it's down to us to make those examples continue. Let's show the Czech and US governments the power of nonviolence. This new unscrupulous arms race doesn't involve only the Czech Republic, but the whole of Europe and the whole world. Support our non-violent movement. The failure of the American project in the Czech Republic could represent a big victory for democracy and will be an important signal for detente throughout the world. A victory for David against an insolent Goliath.